In the end, it probably wasn't just one thing that led to Cassidy's downfall. It was the inappropriate text messages, but it was also the cover up and perhaps a leadership style that made his short tenure as speaker one of the rockiest in years. Madam Speaker, there's 75 votes for Glenn Cassida. Ever since Glenn Cassida's election as House Speaker back in January. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. His refusal to meet with critics had fueled protests. Cassida, we've been trying to get a meeting with you. We're meeting. Among them, activists fighting for racial justice, including the removal of the bust of Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest from the state capitol. <laughs> and women upset over his appointment of Representative David Byrd to chair an education subcommittee, despite 30-year-old allegations that he sexually assaulted three teenage girls. Hey, Mr. Speaker, can, can we talk to you about I'm late for a meeting? The Speaker's office also ignored our questions about an email with what appeared to be an altered date that had been given to Nashville's DA in an apparent attempt to get activist Justin Jones locked up for violating a court order to have no contact with Cassida. I know nothing of that. How did that happen? I do not. I know nothing. I know nothing of that. Nothing. We also uncovered racist text messages sent by Cassidy's chief of staff, Kate Cothran, one using the N word, another saying black people are idiots. How can you defend that? Does that say something about your attitude toward African Americans? One of them sent to Cassidy himself. It kind of verifies in my mind there's something not right about that story. The speaker went on the attack, taking to talk radio to accuse News Channel 5 of using fabricated text messages. Did someone feed Phil Williams false uh, text messages that were not real? That well, that's were, what uh, I was going to ask you about. Where did, where did he get these text messages from? You know, it's, it's easily done. Cassidy did not know was that New Channel 5 investigates had even more evidence, including a selfie that Catherine had taken describing his use of illegal drugs. There were also vulgar text messages between Catherine and Cassidy about women and a secret recording of a phone call that the speaker made to a person he suspected of leaking the text messages. Well, I wish it sounds like you might have, might have something. Um, so. It's always the cover-up that's worse. Talk radio host Phil Valentine was done. But I'm expecting honest answers. I'm not expecting somebody to use me to spin his story and spin his web. Come on, enough of the shilly-shallying around and half answers. Democrats called for Cassidy to step down, as did the state's Republican lieutenant governor. If I was in that deep water, I think, I think I'd just go home. I feel very strongly that the major overwhelming majority is still with me. We also uncovered evidence that Cassida had put political operative Michael Latvi on the state payroll, paying him $48,000 a year with no requirement that he actually put in a full work week. If you're getting a full-time salary and you're getting benefits, you should show up full-time. And a lot of times in the General Assembly, that's long hours. One of Latvi's jobs we discovered was helping the speaker draft messages attacking the women who had accused Representative Byrd of sexual assault. One of them was Christy Rice. You know, they were using state dollars to attack me. So where's their, where's their morality? You think that is immoral? Yes. Absolutely. I'm sorry, this is this is a legal office and we can't have you here. But, but this is the House Ethics Committee. No, this, is, this is a meeting between uh, attorneys and, and the um, deputy speaker. A prominent Republican also accused Cassida of trying to manipulate the House Ethics Committee into issuing a report that cleared him of any wrongdoing. Same! 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 All of that led to the unprecedented meeting of the House Republican Caucus to consider the Speaker's fate. Behind closed doors, he pleaded for his job. A vote of no confidence. Instead, he got a resounding vote of no confidence. I think what changed today is that you now know how a majority mem of the members of the Republican Caucus feel about the allegations that have been made. Speaker, what did you tell the caucus? Forgive did you me. resign? Did you the resign? The Within hours of his quick exit from the meeting, Cassidy lost the support of virtually every other Republican leader in the state. By this point, the handwriting was on the wall. Another potential factor, the fear of the unknown. After the first stories, Cassida assured his colleagues there were no more to come. Now, no one knows what to expect next. Phil Williams, News Channel 5 Investigates.